Hi there guys and welcome once again to Jonesy's vlog. You will have to um, forgive my voice if it does start to, <laughs> start to go a bit. Uh, all the shouting yesterday mixed today with uh, with doing the stadium announcement at Hunslet Hawks. It is getting a little bit gravelly so um, just bear with me if it does start to go. But anyway, reaction to yesterday's fantastic 3-0 uh, win at home to uh, home to Huddersfield. Uh, fantastic for so so many reasons which uh, which I will get onto through uh, throughout the course of the video. So as I said in in, uh, in the last vlog, going into the derby game like this, you know, form always goes completely out of the window. So you know we've been on a pretty decent you know rich vein of form recently. Uh, you know the performances have been getting much better and the players are looking a lot more confident. And obviously Huddersfield have been basically the opposite. Obviously going through losing losing the manager, just getting a new guy in. Results have not been going their way. Um, but but like I said, the form goes out the window for these kind of games. And um, you know I was expecting a really tough, um, close, you know fierce Yorkshire derby. I felt it would be a very tough uh, test for obviously the the new guys, the new players, especially the ones from sort of over in Italy and from abroad. You know, it will be a brand new, completely different atmosphere to probably what they've been used to um, playing over in, in Italy. Uh, you know, a proper fiery derby like that, you know, the 29,000, 29, well over 29,000 there. Uh, you know, the, the fierce, fierce atmosphere as it always is. Uh, a lot of expectation and everything. So, you know, although I was going into the game confident, obviously, you know, I, I couldn't definitely see, you know, it being a... a a convincing win or, or whatever like that so you know to, to come out of it 3-0 um, and the way that we played uh, you know the intensity that we played at and quite frankly how poor Huddersfield were um, they seemed to just completely give up the fight I, I just completely wasn't expecting it at all looking at the the, the lineups there was just one change to the starting 11 and that was a uh, Casper slot in for Billy Sharp um, and on the bench, uh, Steve Morrison was on there for the first time this season. Uh, with I think Scott Wooten was was making way there. Um, but you know, very much a, you know the same team to to that that won against Bournemouth. And you know, again, we got off to a pretty decent start. I mean, things were very even to start off with. Uh, you know, there wasn't much in the game at all. With with neither side making any clear cut chances. Um, but you know, we were still starting and continuing that form of. You know the passing and the moving. Uh, you know very little long ball sort of played from from defence, um, but still fairly quiet in that final third to begin with. Um, and then that that first goal just set everything up. You know fantastic work from from Antonucci closing closing their defender down. Um, uh, the ball then ricocheting to to Rudy Austin who was absolutely on fire yesterday. I mean he was back to his true true beast for him yesterday. Um, you know, taking one one touch and absolutely powering it past uh, past Smithers in net. I mean, really, from a Huddersfield point of view, you'd expect Smithers to do better. You know, getting beaten at his near post there, but you know there was a lot of power behind the shot. So I mean, uh, there was that in uh, in Austin's favour. But you know, fantastic finish um, and just what we needed at that that time in the game to to get every everyone lifted in in the ground. Because like I say, it had been pretty even. And I think people were starting to get a little bit tense, thinking it was going to be a, a nervy nil-nil sort of all game, and only maybe one goal would settle it. But uh, but getting that goal at that time was uh, uh, a real good time to get it, I think. Um, and it just pushed the players forward. Like I say, Huddersfield just seemed to really drop. I mean, they they had no, you know, where where we were really intense in our sort of attacking play and and the way we were going about it. They had absolutely no intensity at all, you know, there seemed to be no real fight from them, which, um, like I say, in a Yorkshire derby like that is, you know, you don't see very often. Um, I mean, you could see the way their, their fans were reacting, you know, you could tell they, they you know, weren't happy with, with how things were going. Um, and then, obviously, vitally, I think getting that goal on the stroke of half time, I mean, Chris Powell said it, the Huddersfield manager, you know, that was that was a, a real sucker punch Um you know, to uh, to Huddersfield, and uh, you know, just a fantastic time for for us to get it once again. Um, you know, a fantastic breakaway from Antonucci, that man Belushi again, the absolute madman that is. Um, you know, getting forward with him, 
almost scored an absolutely sublime goal himself. I mean, that chip was just almost inch perfect. Um, obviously, coming coming off the bar and Antonucci with uh, a very a very neat finish. Really, I mean, it was you know a ball that was bouncing. He did have a dirty defender in front of him. A lot of players may have skied it and everything, but he uh, he powered it into the net and going into the break to two nil up was absolutely perfect and and set us up for the rest of the game. Really, obviously, you'd expect from that that. Uh, you know, Chris Powell would, would sort of lay into his team and and try and get them, you know, pick them back up for the second half, which which did happen really. The way that the second half um, started, Huddersfield definitely got into it a little bit more, but again, still no real bite to their final third. Very much what we've been experiencing recently. Um, but it was one of those again, like I said over the past few vlogs. You know, I was never in fear that you know Huddersfield were going to get a goal. Um, you know, no matter how much they sort of attacked or got to that final third, it just let them down so much that I really didn't, you know, I, I didn't feel that they were going to get a goal. I mean, the only player for them that really was causing us a lot of problems was, uh, I think his name's Harry Bunn, um, who was down on, on the left-hand side. I mean, Berardi had had a good game, uh, but uh, but Harry Bunn had just, he did run, run rings around him at times, uh, and that was nothing against Berardi, he was just a really good player, obviously. Um, and he was the only player that looked like he was trying to create anything for uh, for Huddersfield. But again, you know, the final ball from him sometimes wasn't quite working out and not getting the ball into the box. Uh, you know, Naki Wells was very quiet for them. Uh, and like I say, you know, they did sort of come into the game a little bit more in that in that in the start of that second half. Um, and they had a little bit more of the possession. But again, we were just playing that calm, composed uh, football, making the little triangles and the passing there. You know, up front, the Cara, Antonucci, Slot, Bianchi, you know, they were all working together. Um, well, the, the whole team were, I mean, defensively, we were we were absolutely sound. Stephen Warnock, again, absolutely so solid for me. Um, you know, not putting a foot wrong at all. Like I just mentioned, Berardi was doing okay. Uh, again, Belushi and Pierce in the centre looking, looking like rocks. And, you know, just the, the whole team, again... It would, they were just working so well together, um, and and uh, for that final goal for Dakara's goal again, just fantastic build-up play. Rudy Austin um, was like I say, it was back to his, his beast mode. Um, you know, rampaging forward. Um, I think Bianchi was in, uh, involved in the build-up as well, playing the ball forward to Dakara. Uh, nice little cut back from him and a fantastic finish into the bottom uh, into the bottom left hand corner from him. I was really pleased that he got another goal because again his performance deserved it. He seems to be involved in so much of our uh, you know attacking play at the moment. You know a lot of our attacks seem to be going through him. Um, so delighted that, that he got on the score sheet. So uh, you know it could have been more as well even after the the sending off. Uh, I can't really say too much about the sending off because. I didn't see the first yellow card, um, and I only just saw that the second one. The second one looked like a deserved yellow, uh, but like I said, I didn't see the first one. My dad, uh, who was sat up in the northeast upper, said he felt it was harsh, but again, it's very difficult to say. Um, but just a shame, you know, that he's, he's going to be missing out for another game now. You know, it, it'd be nice for him to get a consistent run in the team because I do think he's going to be a good player. Um, you know, he's getting a few solid performances in there. Um, but you know, at least we've got cover now. You know, Sam Byron's back, so he can just slot right, right back in there. Because with the red card coming on, was it about 80 minutes? I think. Um, you know, we weren't in any proper danger of of losing the game from that from that point. Uh, but I was definitely expecting very much sort of back backs against the wall kind of thing, and then to uh, uh, to really start attacking our, our goal and maybe just get a consolation or something. But again, that never really seemed to happen. I mean, they had one. Glorious chance that I think it was John Stead put it over over the bar, um, but that was it really. And I mean, we could have extended our lead quite easily. Um, you know, had a few more attacks, and uh, you know, Antonucci had a glorious opportunity to make it four, but Smith has made a, a pretty decent save and tipped it onto the post towards the end. So I mean, all round, obviously the red card aside, you know, it was a perfect a perfect day, a perfect performance from us. Um, good to finally get. Um, a sort of a clinical win, you know, obviously winning by quite a few goals, getting the clean sheet, which is always important, um, you know, made our goal difference uh, looking much better now back up to naught. 
um, the same as two other two other teams that are above us. Say with with the team doing so well, I mean it was hard to to really pick a man of the match. I was saying this on Twitter yesterday. Um, you know, push push come to shove. Again, I would have to say Warnock was definitely up there. I think he's so solid at the moment. And, and Austin, Austin for me, um, I'd probably shade it just towards him maybe if I was to make a decision. But like I say, I mean, Bianchi for me played his best game for us so far this season. Uh, you know, he'd gone a little bit quiet over the past few games. I think I mentioned that in the last vlog. But yesterday he, he was making some amazing passes. You know, he's got such great vision on him. Some great touches. Like I said, the build-up for the Cara's goal was brilliant. Uh, but but all the players, it, you know, it seems harsh to give a man of the match because every single player uh, played a, a, a awesome role, a big role in uh, in that win yesterday. Um, and it was good to see the fans' uh, appreciation towards Redfern. Obviously, it was his his last match in charge before uh, before our new manager gets in, uh, which I will go into in a minute. Uh, but yeah, the fans were were chanting his name a lot of the game, and um, he was responding to them. So that was. Uh, that was good to see because I mean he really has got us out of a out of a hole. You know, ten ten points from a possible twelve. Uh, you know, we're in such a different position now to what we were a month a month ago. You know, we're looking at a solid squad, and I you know I, I hold my hands up. You know, I, I thought things were going to be absolutely desperate. Sort of this this time last month. Um, you know, it was a really dire sort of feeling, but um, you know things are definitely looking on the up, and you know there's still room for improvement because it's still. It still wasn't everything wasn't perfection, you know. There were still passes that weren't quite working out and, and everything. And it's still a team working together and working to get you know improve their their all you know individual performances and team performances. So it's good that we you know producing results like that with still clear improvement to be made as well. So so that's my uh, thoughts on the match. Uh, and just quickly today it was um, uh, announced. Well, Stern Gratz have announced it anyway. Uh, that Dako Milinic, I think that's his name. Have I got that right? Uh, is is leaving leaving them uh, to uh, to come to Leeds United. It's still not been uh, confirmed by Leeds United yet, but you know it's pretty you know it's definitely it's gonna gonna happen. So probably gonna be announced tomorrow. I would have thought. And to be honest, it's one of those very similar to when Hocker Day was uh, you know announced. No one really knows too much about him. Uh, obviously, it's a, a lot different from the Hocker Day appointment because it's not like an unknown from you know non-league. You know, at least he does seem to have a bit more experience uh, about him, and you know, working on the European stage. Um, and like I say, I don't want to go into too much. Cause I don't know that much about him, uh, but you just hope that it doesn't spoil things or ruin things. You know, hopefully he comes in and sees the sort of team ethos at the moment and and the way that we're playing, and and doesn't try to impose his own sort of style of play on it. You know, hopefully if Redfern's still going to be sticking about, which it's pretty guaranteed that he will be. Then hopefully things should sort of stay as they are and, and just even add to it. You know, if you can add to it, then even better. So you know, it's too early to, to really give my my true feelings on him because, like I say, I know nothing about him, so it would be unfair to sort of really you know criticise or say anything at the moment. But all the time we'll tell with something like that. Uh, so yeah, we go on to Brentford next uh, next Saturday, which I really can't wait for. Uh, another new uh, another new stadium for me to visit. And uh, yeah, it should be a tough game. I mean, Brentford have been very inconsistent of late. I mean, I think they've been doing all right, but yesterday they lost four um, nil at Middlesbrough. Um, but you know, fair play to to them. You know, Middlesbrough have been doing quite well this season. So I don't know if that's um, a true show of, of what it's going to be like uh, next week at Brentford. But uh, again, you know, you have to expect tough testing in every game that you play in the Championship. But Real looking forward to it. Hope we can build on, you know, what we've been doing already this season. So, um, yeah, that's all from me this uh, this weekend, guys. Uh, leave your thoughts as always in the comments below at my uh, Twitter at Chris Jones LUSC. Uh, leave your thoughts on the game. Your thoughts on the, on the new coach. Um, I'll probably be speaking to you at some point this week anyway. But if not, then uh, do start leaving your uh, uh, predictions for the Brentford game. Um, but yeah, as always, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all very soon.